This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated, blog Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to talk about why fraud defeats any claim of coverage and why a void policy can never respond to a third-party liability claim. Douglas McKenzie and Jeffrey Bigsby, the plaintiffs, filed an insurance dispute action against Geico Marine Insurance Company in the Superior Court of Washington, Snohomish County, on April 7, 2022. GMIC moved to dismiss the complaint. In Douglas, McKenzie, and Jeffrey Bigsby v. Geico Marine, a USDC Western District of Washington, Seattle court on November 2, 2022, resolved the dispute that resulted from a uh, fire on a boat. GMIC issued marine insurance to Mike Schnadatsky for his boat that was moored at the port of Everett, Marina. A fire occurred on Shinodatsky's boat on October 8, 2018, causing extensive damage to the boat and a portion of the boathouse in the immediate vicinity of the boat. Plaintiffs allege that the fire also destroyed personal property and marine equipment that they owned. Shladetsky notified GMIC of the fire, and GMIC returned attorney, retained attorney Anthony Gaspich to represent Shladetsky against any liability claims. However, on March 8, 2019, GMIC sued Shladetsky, alleging that Shladetsky had breached the insurance contract and requested that the contract be voided due to fraud and misrepresentation. Trial Judge Robart entered default judgment against Shladetsky, concluding that the insurance policy was void as a matter of law and Shladetsky was not entitled to coverage. Shladetsky was subsequently criminally charged for submitting a fraudulent insurance claim to GMIC and he ultimately pled guilty and was sentenced to serve jail time of 60 days. Plaintiff McKenzie and Bigby each submitted claims for damages on May 23, 2019, and on August 22, 2019, Gaspich, the appointed attorney, filed a motion to re- withdraw as attorney for Schladetsky, which Judge Robart granted, and Schladetsky proceeded pro se thereafter. Judge Robart granted summary judgment to plaintiffs, awarding McKenzie a judgment against Shladetsky in the amount of $23,360 and Bigsby a judgment against Shladetsky in the amount of $12,537.75. Plaintiffs submitted the judgments to GMIC and demanded payment. GMIC refused to pay plaintiffs' demands because the insurance policy had been voided for fraud nearly two years earlier. Plaintiffs then sued GMIC claiming it violated the Washington Consumer Protection Act, the Washington Insurance Fair Conduct Act, and breached the insurance contract. Thereafter, plaintiffs voluntarily dismissed the IFCA and breach of contract claims. They also dismissed the per se WCPA claim, but the non per se WCPA claim remained. GMIC moved to dismiss the non-per se WCPA claim pursuant to Rule 12b-6 for failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. The court noted that in Washington, a per se WCPA claim is proved by establishing the following five elements. 1. An unfair or deceptive act or practice. 2. Occurring within trade or business. 3. Affecting the public interest, 4. Injuring the plaintiff's business or property, and 5. A causal relation between the deceptive act and the resulting injury. GMIC argued that the non-per se WCPA claim must be dismissed because the complaint has not sufficiently pled facts 
to support a reasonable inference that GMIC engaged in an unfair or deceptive act. The plaintiffs allege that GMIC engaged in unfair and, and deceptive actions by one, having plaintiffs submit claims for review and payment and then not responding, two, initiating the April 2019 exoneration action, three, initiating attorney Gaspis withdrawal from the exoneration action based on secret reasons, four, seeking a default order to void the insurance policy due to fraud without notifying plaintiffs, and five, obtaining the default order without giving plaintiffs an opportunity to object. The court concluded that none of these alleged actions constitute an unfair or deceptive act. Plaintiffs complained the GMIC filed the exoneration action when it had no intent to pay any claims established in that action. First, Schladetsky, not GMIC, filed the limitation of liability lawsuit. GMIC was not a party to the action. Second, it is undisputed that Schladetsky had the legal right to file such an action in an attempt to limit any liability to the value of the vessel. Schladetsky's decision to file a lawsuit he is legally entitled to bring cannot be the basis for an unfair or deceptive act by GMIC nor does Attorney Gaspich's withdrawal from the exoneration action constitute an unfair or deceptive act by GMIC. Once again, this is an action between Schladetsky and Gaspich, who of course didn't want to represent and should not have represented a convicted felon, not GMIC and the plaintiffs. Moreover, it is difficult to see how Gaspich's withdrawal from the exoneration action harmed plaintiffs when they each successfully received judgments against Schladetsky for the total of their demands in the action. Plaintiff's assertion that GMIC acted deceptively when it sought to void the insurance contract for fraud was misplaced. GMIC had the legal right to seek to void the contract between it and its insured based on Schladetsky's fraud, and plaintiffs certainly had no standing to dispute the fraudulent nature of Schladetsky's actions. Plaintiffs do not cite to any legal authority that gives plaintiff the right to receive notice of or object to a contract dispute to which they are not a party. GMIC's failure to give plaintiffs notice of its lawsuit against its insured cannot be the basis of a CPA claim, because plaintiffs failed to allege factual allegations sufficient to establish the first element of a WCPA claim, an unfair or deceptive act or practice by GMIC, the claim, according to the court, must be dismissed. In my opinion, a person who is convicted of insurance fraud in the presentation of a claim must result a priori in the voidance of a policy of insurance. Schledetsky's fraud voided the policy. It no longer existed. There was no policy to defend Schledetsky or to pay any judgments against him. The plaintiffs, who apparently could not collect from the felon, tried to collect from the insurance policy issued to Schledetsky the felon. Although the court gave consideration to the plaintiffs' arguments, it had no choice but to grant GMIC's motion, since there was no policy to respond to the plaintiffs' claims. They have a judgment against the person responsible for their losses, and they should spend their efforts to collect from him. Since 60 days, he's certainly out of jail now and is working. They should not try to bludgeon an insurer who was the victim of a fraud to increase the cost of the fraud imposed by Sladetsky on GMIC. This video was adapted from my blog, Zelma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone 
who clicks on the link, the URL, zalma.com slash blog. You can subscribe to the blog so you will no get notice of every blog posting, which is usually one every five days of the week. You might also subscribe to my videos on rumble.com and youtube.com, which follow uh, some of the blog postings and other videos useful to anyone involved in insurance. And you might also consider subscribing to my Locals community and my Substack publications. Thank you for your attention.